To solve simultaneous equations by substitution, start out by checking because you might need to rearrange one equation to make one of your pronumerals the subject. When you've done that, substitute the expression for that pronumeral into the other equation, solve for one pronumeral, and then when you've got your answer for one of your pronumerals, sub that into either equation to solve for the other. So this first example is quite straightforward because we've already got both equations having one pronumeral just sitting there on its own. So I can just take this first y here and say, hey, from this equation I can see that y is equal to 5x minus 3. So if y is equal to 5x minus 3, but it's also equal to 2x plus 1, surely the 5x minus 3 is equal to the 2x plus 1. Now what I effectively did there was I said y is equal to this and y is equal to that, so this must be equal to that. But the other way to think of it is I had an expression for y, it was 5x minus 3. So then I just rewrote the second equation, but instead of writing y, I said, hey, I know another uh, way of describing y, I can describe it as 5x minus 3. Now once you've made that substitution, you've eliminated one of the pronumerals. There's no y's in this anymore, there's only x's. So now I can actually solve it for x, and you can just do this the usual way. Let's subtract um, 2x from both sides and add 3 to both sides and I can see that 3x is equal to 4, so x must be 4 thirds. Now I can sub that, that value of x into either of these equations to figure out what y will be. I think I'll sub it into 2, but you can sub it into whichever one you like. I write what I'm doing as well, sub into 2. So now I just write out the second equation, but don't write x, write 4 thirds. So y is equal to 2, lots of 4 thirds, plus 1. So that's 8 thirds plus 1, so it won't be 2 and 2 thirds, it will be 3 and 2 thirds, although you can use your calculator for that as well. Now to make it a little bit trickier, sometimes you won't have um, one of your pronumerals sitting there all by itself. You might not have either of them on their own. So let's look at a tougher example. Let's say we have both pronumerals just in amongst other things here, um, and perhaps this one is 5x plus 3y is equal to 10. All right, now to solve these, I'm going to have to get either the x here or here, or the y here or here by itself. Now the easiest one to get on its own, I think, is this y. And the reason is it doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. So if I add y to both sides on this equation and subtract 1 from both sides, I can rearrange, rearrange 1 and I'm calling that equation 1, and say if I add y to both sides but I subtract 1 from both sides, I can see that 2x minus 1 is going to equal y. Now I've got the y sitting by itself and I have an expression that's equal to y. I can now rewrite the other equation using that. So I'm going to sub that into equation 2. I'm just going to write equation 2 out, but when I get to the y part, I'm not going to write y, I'm going to write this, <clears throat> because I know that it is equal to y, so I can write it instead. Now I've got an equation without any y's in it, it's just got x's, so I can solve that. Let's start by expanding the brackets, and then gathering up our x's, adding 3 to both sides, and I can see that x is 13 elevenths. Now I just made the question up, so obviously it didn't come out as a, a whole number, but that's fine. And now I can sub that into either equation. I'm going to pick the first one just because it looks simpler. In fact, no, I'll pick this version of the first one because it says y equals, and it has a lovely little recipe there for y. It's going to be two lots of 13 elevenths minus one. Now notice I didn't work out in my head what it was and write it down because if I made a mistake, I'll get no marks for that. Whereas if I write down what I'm doing and then I actually make an incorrect calculation here, I'll get some sort of mark perhaps because I was trying to multiply my number here by 2 and then take 1 off it and that is the correct procedure. Also if I'd got the wrong answer for x but I did the right thing with it to get y, I might get marks for proceeding on with the correct method. So always show what you're doing before you actually then do it. Here I've got 26 elevenths minus 1, so that's 26 elevenths minus 11 elevenths, so it's 15 elevenths or you could write 1 and 4 elevenths, either way. So I've found x and I've found y. Now this example is a little bit more tricky. 
how can I tell? Well, I think I've got a straight line here because I've got values of x and y and some numbers. This one's a parabola though. So thinking through all of the possibilities, if you've got a parabola, then there's a chance, and this is y equals x squared, so let's draw it in. We know it, whoops, we know it looks something like this. Then there's a chance that a straight line doesn't actually intersect with this parabola at all. Perhaps the straight line goes down like this and there will be actually no solutions. It's also possible that the straight line crosses twice and there'll be two solutions. And it's even possible that it just crosses and touches the parabola once and there might only be one solution. So a good first step is just to keep that in mind so that whatever comes out algebraically makes some sense to you. And it makes even more sense if you can just to do a quick sketch of the actual um, functions that you've got. So for me the y equals x squared is easy. This one would be much easier to graph if it was in the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm thinking that's my first step anyway because if I can rearrange this one so it's in terms of y equals something then I can just let both of the somethings equal each other. Um, and by that I mean if y equals this and y equals that then this and that must equal each other. So let's rearrange equation 2 and let's add x to both sides. Now we've got this. All right, I know this straight line well. It goes through two on the y-axis and it's got a gradient of one. So it's going across like this somehow. So it's gonna cross my parabola twice. So I'm expecting two answers here. All right, now I can see that y is equal to x squared but y is also equal to x plus two. So x plus two must be equal to x squared. Now I've got a quadratic equation. When you try and solve these, you need to either use one of three methods. Either get everything onto one side so that it equals zero and then factorize it if you can. Or if you can't factorize it, use the formula. Or you could complete the square. But even completing a square means the x squared and the x need to be on the same side. Best strategy is to put everything on the one side to start with. I'm gonna put everything onto the right hand side so that I've got positive x squareds to work with. So that's going to leave me with nothing over here and I'm going to subtract x from both sides and subtract 2 from both sides like that. Okay, now solving this, can we think of factors of negative 2 that add to make minus 1? Yep, 1 and minus 2. So this one can be factorised. And if it can, factorising is generally your quickest bet. If you're not good at factorising, you could throw the formula at this and using 1 for a negative 1 for b and negative 2 for c, throw it into the quadratic formula and you'll get out the answers of, whoops, that's not what I meant to write, x being equal to, well, if this part times this part equals 0, one of them must have been 0. For this part to be 0, x would have to be negative 1. And for this part to be 0, x would have to be 2. So those are my two solutions for x. Now that makes a lot of sense with my picture. I'm thinking that these two graphs are going to intersect twice. This point here obviously is minus one something. We're not sure what the y value is. And this point over here must have an x value of two. Now we just need to find both y values. Now it's important that you keep both pairs of answers together, pairs of solutions. So you've got to say when x equals minus one, y equals something, and when x equals 2, y equals something. It's not just that you're going to have two answers for x and two answers for y, it's two pairs of answers that have to go together. So that's quite easy to show with your working just by writing that word when. When x equals minus 1, y equals, all right, how will we figure it out? Let's toss it into this equation. So all we need to do is square negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Now, does that make sense to my graph? Yep, that seems fine. And when x equals 2, y equals 2 squared, which is 4. So over here I've got my points. So if you were asked just to solve these equations simultaneously, this would be your answer. And I'd put a box around it to make it really clear that I'm finished. If you were asked to find the points of intersection of these two um, functions, well then I'd give my answer as two coordinate pairs because that's showing your understanding of these answers as pairs um, that can be graphed on a Cartesian plane.